Hello, this is Wayle Nayo, and I am here with a brand new podcast, Audio Journey. I guess I'm just kind of obsessed with making podcasts right now. So this is my third podcast, and hopefully one that I think will be really, really good and impactful. I am uh, just kind of doing this off the cuff, off the fly, whatever you want to call it. I have my dog Danny next to me. She seems very bored. The cars are driving by outside on a busy road where I live at, so, you know, nothing too formal. I'm just going to talk. So, what is this podcast? It's, um, this podcast is called Becoming a Diamond, My Muay Thai Journey, and as you can tell maybe from the title that this is about Muay Thai, which, for those who don't know, is a type of martial arts originated in Thailand. It's Thai boxing, except, you know, you can use more than just your fists. You can use your, like, use kicking, use elbowing, knees, um, pretty much a lot. And I know it's a very popular martial art and a very effective one. And going through this journey, I can see why it is. Uh, So, yeah, I am just going to talk about, like, what kind of led me on this journey and, you know, over the you know, coming weeks or, you know, however long I want to do this, just kind of talk about what I'm doing, what I'm learning, and really how Muay Thai is changing my life. So I'll kind of give, like, some background info really quick, because background info is always great. Uh, So I did martial arts in, like, middle and high school. I specifically did um, Taekwondo and Karate to start out. I liked both of them. Um, I think I was better at Karate than Taekwondo. But growing up, I mean, like, you know, growing up as a kid and if you do martial arts, it's like, oh, the punching, the kicking, like, it's so cool. And it's like, I can be a badass, you know, hero or fighter like you see in the movies and TV shows. But I, being a weird kid, maybe I kind of like the deeper aspects of martial arts, too, like the lifestyle of it. And instead of, like, doing... Like, I didn't really like sparring a lot. I did get punched in the face once at my karate school taking my orange belt test, which was a very jarring experience, to say the least. But I like doing, I know in karate, I believe it's called, like, the kata, which is, like, the forms that you do that represent moves that you can employ in a fight. So I like doing those a lot better. But it came a time, I believe I was... A sophomore in high school or going in sophomore year I'm not sure the exact um age I was but you know I was taking part in this karate school but it just became like so congested with students and students that weren't necessarily there to like take it seriously like I get places have to make their money like I know that if you want to be in business you have to make your money and you know I did respect the teacher a lot but it just got to a point where it was just so busy with people, especially with kids. And, like, you know, you're a teenager. You don't want to hang out with a bunch of kids. Like, you really just don't. And you don't want to fucking spar with them. And just heads up, I will cuss in this podcast because that's just how I talk. But anyway, you know, I'm, like, 16 years old. Like, I don't want to spar with a 9-year-old kid, like, who can barely pay attention. Like, how is that effective at all? And then... I would work with the adults. I remember there was this one, like, douchebag guy who was just so fucking off-putting, and he was just a real asshole. I did not like him at all and did not feel comfortable around him, like, as a teacher. Like, he would just kind of come randomly and teach, and I don't know. I wasn't really feeling it, so... So, yeah, I eventually, like, left those places. You know, I got involved in other things, and, of course, like, high school, going into college, you know, you get tied up in other stuff. I tried doing Tai Chi when I was in high school. I tried to teach myself um, using a book and a DVD, but, you know, I I didn't stay consistent with it, but I really did like it. And my grandma, um, Janice, she was always really interested in doing Tai Chi, so I kind of got the idea from her. But and I've always loved martial arts, and so the past couple years, I got back into Tai Chi. I have... You know, I've gotten some certifications and making videos, you know, on my website for River Joy Studios and and trying to teach and, you know, really study those things and 
couple months ago, or really even earlier this year, I was kind of thinking, like, I want to try, like, a different martial arts now, like, be in a school and, you know, try to connect with people with, you know, similar interests, and so I was looking around, but knowing what I know now from, like, my experiences at the old schools, like, I did not want to be in a school where, especially as a 26-year-old, I did not want to fight a 10-year-old, or did not want to spar with one, and and being, you know, in the online martial arts communities, I now know the term McDojos, which, I mean, as you can tell from the name, probably isn't, like, the highest standard of school that you can have, but I definitely experienced those things, and again, I know people have to make their money, like, I don't want to say that, like, everybody is just, you know, like negligent and their teachings and all that stuff but I mean it's just not great for everybody and it wasn't great for me if it wasn't great for me as a 16 year old it's definitely not going to be great for me as a 26 year old so you know I was searching around in, in Columbus where I live like there are a lot of different martial arts schools and I was looking at some and I just I checked out a few but it was like like one guy I went to, on the website, it had specifically that there was an adults-only karate class. I get there, he doesn't teach karate, he teaches taekwondo, which, you know, okay. And he says, like, oh yeah, we teach everybody, like, from kids to adults, we all do the same class. But, you know, you work with your age group. And as I'm in there, like, in his office, I can just hear kids, like, running around screaming, and it's, like, this super tiny-ass room, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, I just, I was like, yeah, I'll call you later, like, I'll let you know my decision, never called him, like, I'm not even, you should have seen from my face, he mentioned, oh, yeah, we're in parades sometimes, like, I'm not gonna be in a fucking parade at 26 years old, just not, sorry, not sorry, so, one night, I was, I think I was with my mom and my aunt we were meeting up with my other aunt you know having like a girls night and I was driving through well my mom was driving down Broad Street in Bexley Ohio which is like a suburb of Columbus but it's like within Columbus and it's a whole thing and we drove by this um it's like I don't think it's like a strip mall but it's called like the Bexley Center it's a ton of stores Um, like, been by there a ton of times, like, some of my favorite restaurants are over there, and I look, and I see a sign that says Master Lex Muay Thai, and when I was searching for schools, I had, you know, come across that on Google Maps, and I clicked on it, but there was, like, no phone number, no website, I don't think there were any hours on there, so I saw it, and I was like, oh, like, shit, like, let me take a picture of that so I can remember, and then... The next night, it was like 5 o'clock in the evening, finished with work, and I was just like, like I told my partner, like, you know what, I'll be right back, I'm just gonna go run and do something, and I went, like, on a whim, and they were there, and I talked to Master Leck, who was uh, the guy who started the school, who started it all, and I'll mention him more in my journey later on, because he really is a big part of it, but... You know, I went and I talked to him and told him, like, what I was about, like, what I was trying to accomplish, like, about my life story, you know, including my recovery and what I'm trying to do for my mental health and, like, what I've already done and what I'm trying to do to, you know, stay on the right path of recovery and living the healthiest life that I can. And he was all for it. Like, he has spoken at, like, different conferences for counseling and encouraging people and has gone through a ton of stuff himself. And so it's like he, like, we automatically clicked. Uh, I like his vibe, his style. He's a great dude. And he teaches old school Muay Thai. Like, he is very adamant about the old school part, uh, which I really appreciate. So it really was me just, like, taking a chance, like, a huge chance on it signed up for the class and another thing about um master lex gym is at least from some of the schools i have seen around columbus you will pay a hefty price um for like taking a class per month but then like some of the schools will be like oh like you pay 250 to take like 
two fifty a month to take two or three classes a week, like, no, I'm, like, if I'm paying two hundred and fifty fucking bucks a month, like, I want to get, be there a lot more than that. And Master Lex was, one fifty, and I can come in, you know, however many times I want to in a month. Like, you already got me right there as somebody who, you know, has a pretty good job and makes a decent amount of money, but isn't just like. I don't know, I still very much pinch my pennies and all that stuff, but anyway, like, it just seemed like the perfect school, like, that weekend, I think I went on Thursday, that weekend, I got, like, the gloves, the ankle supports, the hand wraps, and I showed up on Monday and had been going pretty much every day, except for two days a week, one day is closed, and then the other week, the other day, I am working So pretty much I've been going every day since early June, and it's now August 6, 2021. So for about two months I've been going. It really has, like, changed my life so far in two months, and I know I'll continue to do so, and that's why I wanted to make this podcast and share it with you guys and really, like, kind of go, you know, every week or however many times I update this. Like, just talk about different things, like, talk about like, the physical progress I'm making, like, what new skill sets I'm putting to use, also, like, what mental things I'm learning, and also just, like, connecting in this community and hopefully, like, sharing lessons that I've learned to other people who may never do Muay Thai, but, like, it transcends that, so that's what I'm really trying to do and just sharing my story. I thought about, like, doing, like, one of those, like, YouTube, like, progress videos, like, my first day of Muay Thai to a year later, but I just wasn't really feeling that, and it just didn't feel right to me, so since I'm trying to do more in podcasting and share my stories that way, that's why I'm doing this, so, so yeah, I'm really excited about it, and to kind of reference the title, Becoming a Diamond, some people are probably like, what the fuck does that mean, what does it have to do with Muay Thai, well, in Master Lex Jim, and I'm sure this is a saying that goes beyond him, um, but here it is, this saying, this quote that he has. It says, Thai boxers are as rare as diamonds. Their edges are cut by years of training. Their techniques are polished to perfection as the surface of a brilliant jewel, magnificent in its beauty and unsurpassed by its hardness. So, if I'm going to be a Muay Thai fighter, and this doesn't mean I'm going to pop or hop in a ring and fight someone Maybe, I don't know, I'm 26, you can do it at any age, I think, uh, but as I said before, I got punched in the mouth (laughs) when I was a teenager doing a karate test, so I don't know if it would be right for me, but, like, being a Thai boxer or a fighter, it doesn't, or being a part of this lifestyle, it goes beyond, like, the physical ring that you step in to do a fight, like, I really think it is, like, a lifestyle and it is an art that you can employ, in so many different areas, and from what I've heard from people who have trained with Master Luck, and these are people who have been with him, like, over 10 plus years, some over 15, some over 20, which, you know, that does happen in other areas and disciplines and schools and martial arts, but I don't know how common it is, especially seeing, like, some of the McDojo stuff that is around, and again, I get it, people need to make their money, I'm not gonna hate on that, but that was something that really, like, stuck with me. Like, if you got people with you for 15 years and they keep coming back and they're still excited, that's a real talent. It's a real gift. I'm sorry, a real gift that you have that Master Luck has. So, so yeah, that's where the Diamond reference comes from. And I'm just really excited to do this podcast and really share my story. And, oh, wow, my voice just cracked. <laughs> and to really share my story with everyone and document my progress and you know hopefully just kind of take this however far it can go and I think the thing I'm most excited about not just with the podcast with River Joy Studios but also with Master Lex Muay Thai Gym is like building a community of people who you know have differences and like ethnicity, race, language, religion, jobs, anything, like, we talk about, like, inclusion, diversity, but, like, 
how really important that is to like celebrate people's differences. Like there's a few people at the gym who are immigrants who some who don't speak English or not um sorry, I'm just like blanked out on the word on the word are not fluent in, in English yet, but are like working hard and they're at this gym. Like you have people who are from Asian countries, Latin American countries, you got a few people from African countries, you got black, white, Hispanic, like men, women, you know, younger and older people, like it really is like a community that really reflects like not just our country but the world at large and it's something I think is really beautiful and it's a community that has its differences but we're also all the same so I think sometimes and this is just an example I'm not trying to get like political here but that whole notion of like I don't see color which I guess some people think makes them like not a racist or something like that and it's like no like I do see your color or like I do see your differences and I want to celebrate that and because I love that and celebrate it I want to make sure that nobody acts like they're better than you because of their di- of your differences or they don't discriminate against you because of that and that makes sense like that's how I feel at Master Lex and that's what I want to create with the community work I do and the artistic work that I do like creating a community because the past few years like from my early 20s like I kind of lost some of the communities that I really relied on and you know I might talk about that in the future or might not but I think I needed a new community where I could just really start over and it just came at the perfect time with what oh my god I'm keep my voice keeps cracking this community came at the perfect time where I really just needed to try something newer and branch out and so I am so very thankful and I you know just really want to just share that with whoever wants to listen um as uh as time goes by so yeah that's this is the first episode the introductory episode of becoming a diamond about my Muay Thai journey and I really hope whoever is interested that you stay around and you listen more and hopefully connect and yeah thank you guys for listening and I will talk to you soon